Welcome back to our session on cybersecurity. As our next keynote speaker, I'm glad to introduce McAfee Fellow and Chief Scientist, Mr. Raj Samani. Raj is an acclaimed speaker and award-winning cybersecurity professional who has served as a CISO in the past, has assisted multiple law enforcement agencies in cybercrime cases, and is a special advisor to the European Cybercrime Center in The Hague. Today, Raj will address the topic of COVID-19 and insider risk. Please welcome his keynote speech. Well, thank you and uh, good morning. You know, 2020 has been a remarkable year. Many industries have suffered economically, but I think the one sector that probably hasn't suffered this year has been the area of cybercrime. And of course, the year didn't start off like this. In fact, you know, myself, I was actually stuck in hospital at the end of February, and I actually saw advertisements from multiple threat groups. And of course, we have to recognize that cybercrime is probably the only area of crime in which PR departments are actually employed. And threat actors actually came out with statements that they weren't going to go out and target specific sectors. In fact, two ransomware groups were very open and very public. And incidentally, ransomware groups actually understand the concept of real-time payments. But they were very public and said, we weren't going to go after healthcare. In fact, it kind of led us to believe that perhaps all of us, while we're trying to struggle around teaching our children mathematics at home because they're not at school or worrying about where to buy milk, we kind of assume that the bad guys were also in the same position as us. And of course, round about the middle of March, we realized that actually that wasn't true. Now, what's occurred certainly throughout 2020 is the number of infections and really the volume of attacks that we've witnessed have been staggering. We're not talking about a revolution, we're talking about an evolution of attack. Almost every adversary, whether they're not particularly capable, just sending emails to those that are really capable that we'll get into in just a moment, have been leveraging and utilizing COVID as a vehicle to drive massive revenues. And be under no illusion, these are gigantic revenues. You know, from 2016 to 2019, the Gantt Crab crew claimed to have made $2 billion, which led them to actually retire. So there is no question that this is a gigantic challenge for all of us within society. And any preconceived notions that there is a Robin Hood element to this, I think it has to be thrown out of the window. And of course, looking at the types of verticals that are being targeted throughout this year, certainly using COVID as a potential vehicle, we see governments, we see healthcare, and we see the financial sector in the top sectors being targeted throughout the year. Now, one of the main reasons that I think we're seeing profitability for adversaries going up is this construct of ransomware. You know, what started as a threat that was maybe targeting consumers and really only making maybe three to $400 per infection now is in the hundreds of thousands for average payments. And of course, for the financial sector, the demands are significantly higher. For large enterprises, it's not uncommon for us to see demands of up to 10 to $15 million per infection. And probably the most frightening part for any large enterprise is the fact that their ability to respond their ability to be able to determine what's going on in their network has actually reduced significantly. We call this dwell time. In other words, the time from the initial infection to the point in which the, the organization or the business is effectively held hostage. And what historically used to be months or even weeks is now actually, I would argue, hours. In fact, in one particular case that we investigated, 
that dwell time was as little as three to five hours. Now, I want you to just consider that for a moment. In less than three to five hours, you not only have to identify the initial, initial infection, you then have to respond and then mitigate the risk. How quick can organizations do that? Well, the reality is, is that the bad guys are innovating and they're getting better. And of course, this is all at the backdrop of this construct of pseudo ransomware as well. And for financial institutions, the risk is not necessarily we can't get access to our data, but compromising the integrity of their ability to be able to provide customers ability to access their money. And in one of the large banks that we had investigated, we quickly, we quickly realized that the whole construct and the whole attack, which was believed to be ransomware, was nothing more than a smokescreen. In fact, in this particular instance, the objective of the adversaries were to go out and compromise the integrity of the payment platforms in an effort to steal money, which ultimately they were successful. But of course, the bank and their focus and the focus of their security teams was focusing around the encryption attacks because that was what was believed to be the ultimate objective of the adversary. And so we live in an environment and in a world in which this is an outsourced economy and the ability to be able to obfuscate and the ability to be able to select any type of malware that they wish to use has become significantly easier. And of course, if we look at this year for 2020, whilst a lot of the focus has been around the volume of attacks that have been leveraging COVID, and you know, we're awash with various different reports showing the percentage increase in malicious URLs or malicious, malicious SMS messages being sent to your customers, there's been some very capable ad adversaries that have also been hiding in amongst the noise. A really wonderful example that we have here was a group that we believe to be no, known as the Hidden Cobra Group, who are a nation state government sponsored threat actor. And now they're not just using emails to target their victims, but actually in this particular case, they're using social networks. Social networks that each and every single one of us depend upon those social networks that are actually under the control of our employees, not us. And by creating fake profiles, threat actors were able to, in effect, insert espionage related malware onto victim computers. This ultimately allowed them visibility into some of the largest organizations in the world. And whilst the focus about certainly the cybersecurity industry has been around the volume of COVID related threats, there's been very specific targeting of large enterprises and large organizations with the objective of growing or effectively carrying out international espionage and the theft of intellectual property within large organizations. And of course, the challenge that we face with regards to all of this is, is the fact that organizations and enterprises have no visibility of this because they're targeting the platforms that our employees use and depend upon. And of course, by using fake job offers as a vehicle to try to lure victims, employees aren't going to notify their employer and say, hey, I think I might have clicked on a malicious link or I might have opened a malicious file because they don't want their employees to know that they're considering other jobs. And so this is innovation, research and development that we're seeing from threat actors. And I have to stress, this is successful and they are successful at what they are doing just because they are able to invest in this particular area. And of course, this is not new. You know, this particular campaign known as North Star, we've seen as far back as 2019 as well as 2017. And as we analyze our threat actors and as we analyze the cybersecurity landscape, we have to improve because, quite frankly, the adversaries are improving as well. We see significant investment in developing new code, new tactics, and new techniques. 
Now, whilst the majority of the focus around cybersecurity looks at things like prevalence, in other words, the number of victims out there across the world, we have to recognize that there are threat actors that are operating and certainly improving throughout 2020 who remain completely hidden because they're so focused and so targeted. And so to kind of sum up how 2020 has been, we have to stress that the focus fundamentally across industry has been looking at things like the number of infections out there. But for large enterprises and certainly those in the financial sector, it is important to recognize that there are very capable threat actors that are highly, highly funded and highly resourced who are constantly innovating. My ask of this particular group and my ask of organizations across the world today, the most important thing that we can do is to understand and recognize our adversaries because our adversaries are improving, our adversaries are getting better, and quite frankly, they are becoming successful because there's just so much noise out there. With that, thank you very much for the opportunity and I hope you enjoy the panel discussion. Thank you, Raj, for your intriguing, uh, very informative and often uh, eye-opening insights.